Hello everyone, and welcome to another review video. This time, we're going to be reviewing a movie called Galaxy Express 999, and it is an anime from 1979. But before we get into that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss an instance when a video is uploaded. Galaxy 999 started out as a manga that ran from 1977 to 1987 and the anime series ran on Japanese television from 1978 to 1981. There were several movie versions that were made but this one is the first from 1979 and it is a condensed version of the first season of the anime series. The story follows 10 year old orphan Tetsuo Hoshino as he tries to follow his mother's last wishes for him to get a machine body that would allow him to live forever. And in order to do that, he needs to get to the planet Prometheum, which is in the Andromeda galaxy. Now, if he can get there, he will get one for free because the people on Prometheum gave free machine bodies to anyone that can get to their planet. Now to get there, he will have to travel on the Galaxy Express 999, which is a machine that is designed to look like a steam engine locomotive driven train. The train is actually controlled by an AI. The train actually travels in a hyperspace tube that is filled with air that allows the train windows to be open. With that background out of the way, let's get into it. The room begins with the Galaxy Express 999 coming in to land on Earth at the interstellar train station. We cut to Tetsuo and two of his friends who are in the train station. They have targeted a couple that have just bought a ticket for the Galaxy Express 999 and they steal it from them and they take off. His two friends get away with the ticket but Tetsuo is caught by the android cops who rough him up. He loses his pendant and Maytel retrieves it and that's where he meets her for the first time. His friends throw him a motorized skateboard and he escapes. The cops are chasing him however and he falls down into the depths of the city and the cops come after him. With Maytel watching the action from above, the cops shoot at him but he manages to get up towards her and she helps him as he faints in her arms. She takes him to her hotel room where she puts a dream sensor on his forehead and she's able to see his dreams. He's dreaming about the last time that he was with his mother. They were in a snowstorm heading for Megatropolis and talking about getting machine bodies when Count Mecca, who is a machine man, he finds them and he shoots and kills Tetsuo's mother. And as she's dying, she made Tetsuo promise that he would go to get a machine body so he could live forever. When he wakes up, Maytel makes a deal with him. She will give him the ticket to go to get a machine body, but one condition is she has to go with him. Just then, the cops come and break in and Mittel stuns them and she and Tetsuo heads down to the train station. So they board the train and it leaves Megatropolis, heads out into orbit and finally leaves Earth behind. The conductor comes over and tells them that the first stop will be Titan and the layover will be 16 days. Apparently it stays one Earth day on whatever planet it stays, however long a local Earth day is. And on Titan, that's 16 days. He warns them that they cannot be late in boarding because the train will leave them behind and they will be stuck there on that planet. They land on Titan and they leave the station. And the first thing that happens is a man gets killed right in front of them. Then may tell is kidnapped and when Tetsuo tries to chase after them he is shot. When he comes through he's in an old woman's house and she feeds him and after that he asks her where they took Maytel and she tells him and when he insists on going she tells him he may end up getting killed but she gives him a gun, a hat, a cloak and a boat and he goes on his way. 
As Tetsuo crosses the lake, he sees flying overhead a drone with a little girl gripped in its manipulating arm. She was screaming for help, so he shoots it out of the sky and the recoil knocks him into the water. She's caught by a man who cradles her. Right at this point, Tetsuo pulls his gun and shoots again. He kills a machine man that was hiding behind a tree. Tetsuo recognizes the man with the little girl as the one who has taken Meitel. They don't kill Tetsuo because Tetsuo saved the little girl's life. Instead, they take Tetsuo with them to their hideout. Once there, they x-ray Tetsuo to make sure he's not a machine man. Then they bring out Meitel and they x-ray her too to make sure she's not a machine. It turns out that those bandits were taking care of a bunch of kids, all of whom had their parents killed by Count Mecca, the same machine man that killed Tetsuo's mother. After telling Tetsuo that if he ever meets Count Mecca, he is to shoot him without mercy, they let them go. So Mittel and Tetsuo get back to where the old lady lives, and Tetsuo attempts to give her back the items that she gave him, but she tells him to keep them because he reminds her of her son who left and went away a long time ago. It turns out that that old lady is Toshiro Oyama's mother. And Toshiro Oyama is a character in Captain Harlock. So they hop a Galaxy Triple Nine and they leave Titan. Once they're on the way, the conductor comes in and tells them that the next stop will be Pluto and that they'll be staying there for six and a half days. Since Tetsu is feeling cold, Maytel warms him up. Once they land on Pluto and get settled in, Maytel tells Tetsuo that she has some errands to run. So she's going to be leaving him on his own. He follows her and sees her kneeling, staring down in the ice. He goes out in the ice and he sees beneath the ice thousands of human bodies. That's when a machine woman comes up to him and grabs him and forces him to come with her to look at her human body. She doesn't have a face and her name is Ghost. She holds on to him and she wants to keep him because he's alive and warm. But Maytel comes along and saves him. As they leave Pluto and head out, Maytel tells him that Ghost is conflicted. She wants eternal life, which she can only have with a machine body, but she also wants to be human again. Back on the train, Maytel falls asleep and Tetsuo contemplates putting the dream sensor on her forehead so he could find out more about her, but ultimately decides against it. And when Maytel wakes up and realizes what he's done, she smiles. Later in the dining car, they meet Crystal Claire, who is a woman made out of crystal, and her real body is on Pluto. When the lights in the train go out, because it's passing through an interdimensional tunnel, Crystal Claire lights up as she's leading Tetsuo back to his cabin. Just as the light comes back on, you see the pirate ship, the Queen Emeraldus, passing by. Tetsuo, trying to gain the Queen Emeraldus' attention, shoots at it. Emeraldus herself comes on board, demanding to know who shot at her ship. When she realized that Tetsuo was just a kid, she doesn't shoot him, but she demands to know where he got the hat and the gun because they once belonged to her lover. They tell her, and then Maytel convinces Emeraldus to tell Tetsuo where Count Mecca's time castle will appear next. She tells him that Count Mecca will be next appearing at Trader's Fork, and then she leaves, warning him not to get himself killed. After Emeraldus leaves, the conductor tells them that the next stop on the train is Trader's Fork. But Crystal Claire is a bit worried, thinking that Tetsuo is going to get himself killed. After they landed, Tetsuo tells Mattel that he's going to look around to try and find some information about Count Mecca's time castle. He ends up in a bar where there's a lady singing. After the song is over, he speaks to the bartender and the minute he mentions 
Count Mecca and the time castle, the place got quiet. The bartender drags him into a back room and after he explains what he wants to the bartender, the bartender gives him directions to a man who may have information. Some machine men came into the back room to find out what the bartender was telling Tetsuo but Tatsu was already gone. So Tatsu is on a bike heading out into the desert following the directions that the bartender gave him. He gets into an accident and when he gets up he finds that he is right next to a derelict spacecraft and as he's watching out of the spaceship walks Toshiro Oyama, the man whose hat and cloak and gun he has. After he explains how he got the items belonging to Toshiro and that he met Toshiro's mother and Emerelda's Toshiro who is dying asked him for a favor. Toshiro asked Totsuro to at his signal pull the lever and when he does Toshiro's consciousness was transferred up into the spaceship Arcadia. With that his body dies and Tetsuro buries him. At this point the machine man from the bar catches up with him and then beat him senseless and leave him lying in the desert. Tetsuro makes it back to the bar where he demands his gun from the machine man. But as the machine man was about to kill him, Captain Harlock shows up and saves his life. They head back to the hotel where they meet up with Maytel and Emeraldus. And when Captain Harlock told Esmeraldas that Toshiro was dead, she walks away heartbroken. That night, Tetsuro goes to the spot where Toshiro told him the time castle would be and he meets it. So Tetsuro sneaks into the time castle. He comes across the dining hall where his mother's corpse is decorating the wall. At this point, Count Mecca and his men along with the lady from the bar comes into the room. When Tetsuo tries to shoot Count Mecca, they shoot the gun out of his hand but the bandit from Titan is also there and with his help they began killing Count Mecca's men. Count Mecca and the lady run to the time castle control room with Tetsuo close on their heels. They make it to the barrier with Tetsuo on the outside. But the bandit comes up and places himself against the barrier and blows himself up, breaching the barrier. And Tetsuo shoots Count Mecca in the head, killing him. The lady, who is also a machine woman, tells Tetsuo to run because the time castle is about to self-destruct now that Count Mecca is dead. Tetsuo barely makes it outside before the time castle disintegrates, leaving the lady to die at Count Mecca's side, and he leaves her guitar as a tombstone. Tetsuo and Maytel just make it back in time before the Galaxy Express 999 had to leave. The Arcadia leaves at the same time. At dinner, Tetsuo tells Maytel that he'd like to live with her after they get back to earth but he's asleep when the conductor comes by and he doesn't hear the conductor say that the final destination is the planet Metel, the machine planet. They land on the planet and that's when he realizes that the name of the planet is Metel and when the gods addressed Metel as her highness he realized that she had betrayed him so he slaps her and the gods knock him out and drag him away. They drag him to a surgical table and strap him in and Queen Prometheum who is ruler of the mechanized empire tell him that they're gonna make him a bolt with a soul because machines with souls last longer and do better than regular machines. Mitel comes running down and when Tetsuo sees her, he calls her a monster. That's when Queen Prometheum says he is not to disrespect her daughter, the sole heir to the mechanized empire. 
just then a disembodied voice speaking from the pendant around Mattel's neck tells Tetsuo that Mattel loves him. That voice belongs to Dr. Man, who is Mattel's father and the creator of the mechanized empire, who is working with Mattel in an attempt to destroy that mechanized empire. With her father urging her to throw the pendant into the heart of the machine world, Mattel is having trouble because it would mean his death along with her mother's. But Tatsuo grabs it from her. Meanwhile, Captain Harlock and the Arcadia, along with Emeraldus and the Queen Emeraldus, have joined together to attack the machine world. Tetsuo throws the pendant into the heart of the machine and its destruction begins. Tetsuo and Mattel race towards the Galaxy Express 999 while the planet is bombarded from on top and falling apart from below. They make it to the train and it takes off just as the planet is falling apart. But the queen is not done yet. She gets on the train and she grabs Tetsuo intending to kill him in front of Maytel, but Crystal Clear grabs her and kills the queen and herself, sacrificing herself to save Tetsuo. The planet then blows apart. While the remnants of the planet drift by, all that is left of Crystal Clear is one shroud, which Tetsuo keeps. Captain Harlock and the crew of the Arcadia wave goodbye to Tetsuo as they drift by, as does Emeraldus. They get back to Earth and Maytel tells Tetsuo goodbye that she's gonna go get her own body and she kisses him. She then boards the train and he walks next to the train for a while and then he stands and watches it disappear up out in the distance and that's how the movie ends. This is a classic anime from the 70s and as such, the quality of the animation is a bit rough compared to today's standards. But it is a very good story overall and it bridges and adds to some storylines of other animes like Captain Harlock. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching and listening and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next video.